take a look at the Big Ten, and it seems like anyone can get knocked off on any given night. Do you guys just kind of go into these games expecting that they're going to be close? Any Big Ten opponent, or I guess regardless Big Ten or not, that it's going to be a tight game? I mean, yeah, ev- our our focus is going one and all when we play each game. Um, never never look past an opponent. So um, this Gopher team, they got a lot of good guys. Um, they might not have put it all together yet, but we got to make sure that we uh, do a good job of making sure that they don't get rolling when they come in here tomorrow. Tyler, um, you're playing at home tomorrow, but you're going to be hitting the road again soon. And, and last year, your road record in the league was a key factor in helping you guys win a title. What were some? What are the keys, in your opinion, that this that, that a team actually must do well to win on the road in the Big Ten? Um, I feel like we just we can't flinch. Um, on the road, uh, the odds might be stacked against you, the crowd, the refs, um, but we just got to stay in the moment, um, take it play by play, um, and that starts. To here today in practice, um, having a good practice, um, not looking too far down the road, and then just continue to get better and better each day. Um, there's not necessarily one specific thing I would say that we got to do on the road, um, other than showing up every day at practice and getting the job done. Tyler, how long last year did it take to feel comfortable with Steven in the starting lineup in terms of your two chemistry at the low block? And now, how seamless is it for, for the two of you just to kind of know where each other's going to be and to be effective down there as a tandem? Um, I think last year we were kind of trying to figure it out. We had a lot of new guys in the starting lineup um, trying to get a feel for each other. Um, where this year I feel like um, we've all kind of been here before. We kind of know what to expect going into the Big Ten season. Um, and we've been playing, playing together. Um, we know what, what each other likes to do, know where we want the ball, where, where our spots are. Um, we've been doing a good job of sharing the ball and getting each other um, involved in the offense. Tyler, a question on Jordan Davis. I remember last year at the Big Ten meetings, you and Johnny talked about wanting to be more as leaders, and and obviously Johnny had a great year. And Jordan, before this season, talked about wanting to be not compared to Johnny anymore, just be who he is as a player. What do you think he's done so far this season to to contribute to this team, whether it's rebounding, um, hitting three point shots, whatever, just being himself and not not being his his brother. Right. I mean, I, I know uh, last year and a little bit in the off season, it's it's kind of easy to compare him um, to his older brother or his twin brother, um, who's not here anymore. But uh, what I like from him is he's always kept his head down. Um, he kind of just shakes those comments off, and he's stuck to himself this year. Um, it's been good. He's been a really good cutter, um, a really good three-point shooter, um, and also on the defensive rebounding end. Um, he just gives us a spark, um, and he's a great, great guy to have out on the court with us. Stephen Greg said that that Tyler's leadership now is completely different than what it was 18 months ago. I'm curious what you've seen change in him, and how has he helped push this team uh, to the point that they're at now? Um, yeah, like last year, we all kind of knew Brad was the loudest guy out there, but now that's T, and T's doing kind of the same exact thing that Brad would do. Whether it's um, we come to a media timeout, sometimes it's not Coach talking, it's Tyler talking, and Coach doesn't have to do a lot of talking. And um, so I think just taking over that vocal role out there and that being that vocal leader. Um, he has been for us. And then, like I said, even when we're out on the floor, it's just us five and no coaches. He's, he's the one that's talking, keeping us in the game. And uh, he's doing a great job of it. This is for both of you guys because, you know, Minnesota natives. Obviously, you've played Minnesota before, so this is nothing new. But maybe when you were growing up, were you go for fans? And when did it become like, was it after you signed at Wisconsin that you're like, I'm a Badger and this? This is rivalry doesn't mean anything or it means more, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, well for me, um, I grew up kind of a Badger fan. My sister played basketball at lacrosse um, So I kind of have that Wisconsin basketball in me um, But we got to look at it as any other game um, we got to do our job Well, and we got to do what we need to do to win um, And we just can't lose focus of that. We can't let the outside um, extremities um, affect our basketball play tomorrow Steve how about you on that one? Um, yeah, I kind of grew up a Gopher fan, I'll be honest. But once I got here, uh, <laughs> that all went out the window, and there's no no love there anymore. So, um, but like Tyler said, it's like any other game. It's a Big Ten opponent. It should be a good game. And um, like you said, we just got to bring our A game, like we like we should every night and play Badger basketball. Steven, going off of that, I know your sister's a gopher. I'm curious if she turns to a badger this week for you or if uh, there's a little bit of trash talk between the family or what that looks like. Oh, uh, no, we're, we're all badgers for basketball. So, um, no, she'll she'll be a badger fan for this game for sure. Is she coming? Uh, no, she won't be here, but she'll probably be watching. 
Stephen, I'm not sure if you've touched on this already, but just talking about Friday's performance and the confidence that one, it gave you, you said, starting off a little bit on a funk um, and starting, you know, getting into the bulk of Big Ten play. Friday's performance, what does it mean to have a game like this as you head into Big Ten now? Yeah, no, it for sure felt good for me just to um, hit a couple shots. I know I've been struggling from uh, beyond the arc, so um, I think that was the biggest thing for me to see a couple threes go down. And then um, a lot of that has to do with my teammates, like I said earlier, whether it was Chucky, Tyler, Jordan, setting me up for those good good opportunities and cutting off me. So um, but I think I think for me just seeing those couple threes drop was, was the biggest thing. And uh, for, for both of you guys, too, I know Connor's in the room right now, too, just talking about the, you know, fourth leading scorer on this team. You know, what are you guys seeing in, in this young guy over here? Whoever wants to start. Um, he's, he's got no fear. Um, that's what you need to have if you're, if you're a freshman in the Big Ten. Um, it's been good to see him grow. Um, I, I can't wait to continue to watch him grow and get better. Um, and he's going to be a great player in this league one day. Yeah, I agree with Tyler. Just the growth he's taken, whether it's uh, on the court with his confidence or in the weight room with his strength, he's growing every day. And um, he's going to be a great player here. So. Tyler, over here, last last year you guys did not shoot the three consistently well, and that, that was a weakness of that team. This year it looks to be different, although it's still a, still a long season to go. Did you have an idea coming into the season that you guys had the potential to be more consistent for three-point range, maybe have more guys who could shoot the three? Yeah, I mean, we got a lot of good three-point shooters on this team. Um, a lot of guys where that's their forte. Um, but we also put a lot of work in in this summer. Um, a lot of guys in there in the gym um, getting a lot of extra shots up. Um, knowing that it's going to pay off um, as it goes on. So guys are going in every day, um, getting their shots up, and just trying to get better, um, not knowing what, what to expect, um, but knowing that it's going to help. So that's, that's what I put it to. <laughs> Haven't seen you guys since last year. Ding. Ding. What do you call a fish in medical school? No. Ben, a fish in medical school. Todd, no, a sturgeon. <laughs> All right, well, we're ready to go back into Big Ten play. We're excited to have uh, Minnesota coming in. Um, obviously, you watch scores and games around the league. You know, it's as normal. Um, get your popcorn, buckle in. It'll be a wild ride. So. Um, you know, I thought we played really well going through the film of Friday night, really clean. Um, you know, I thought, as I said after that game uh, Friday night, that I thought they hit a lot of tough shots, but they did. Um, but, you know, I think a lot of good things for having that much time off uh, in between games. I thought we prepared well, and, and uh, they're in a good place right now. So I know they're excited to get back to, to league play, and um, now we, we know what's in front of us and looking forward to tomorrow night. So, questions? Greg, you, you said after the game last night, I think before that too, that you've changed your thoughts about when you give guys time off and how much. Mm -hmm. how, how has that developed with you? I mean, is that like we're talking decades of, of thinking that has changed recently? Or, or what's, what's been your process like? Yeah, I, I think, you know, the schedule a lot of times dictates what you can or cannot do. and. Quite frankly, we haven't had that much time. I haven't had that much time off as a coach since I was with Bo and Platteville in the 90s when we would have six, seven, eight days, you know, in between the holidays where if we weren't playing in a holiday tournament somewhere, we came back after finals and didn't have anything until around the first of the year. So we always had a larger break. Um, that, And I always thought that was good because it was a refresher type of feeling um, as you came back from that. And with this group, obviously, I mentioned the, the foreign tour. Uh, I thought that's always a fear as a coach. That's one of the negatives. There aren't many negatives, but that's one of them, that if you get yourself in a position coming through the back half of your season, does the summer start to catch up to you? So um, I think, you know, overall, I've looked at more as, you know, let, more is not necessarily necessary. Less is more, actually, in term, not even in terms of time off, but even practice time. You know, we've shortened things. Um, you know, I'll start now even more as we go um, into conference play. It'll go from, you know, an hour 30, hour 40 to an hour 15, hour 10. By the time we hit mid-February, it'll be under an hour. So just staying sharp, you know, there'll be always some fine-tuning and things you have to do. But um, 
I think uh, since you like all my bad dad jokes, I've kind of looked. I've kind of viewed it as it has to be has to look and feel like it does when you go to the grocery store and you're looking at the produce aisle. Okay, the produce fridge area. Everything has to be fresh and healthy. So that's the motto: stay fresh and healthy. Do you got? Do you get that, Evan? Did you catch that? You got it. Okay. All right. Um, it, obviously, you're you're resuming Big Ten play at home, but you got a, a road game coming up Saturday. And last year, your your record on the road in Big Ten play probably led you to getting a share of the title. There's no one formula to winning on the road, but what are some of the things you think as a coach, your team absolutely must do on the road? no matter who you play, to be successful. Right. I think the thing that's kept us successful um, or in the road record we've had over the last two decades is that the routine and preparation is very similar to what it is at home. You can't exactly mimic it because you are in a hotel, but we've tried to do even scouting reports here now, and we used to do them always. We'd pack all the equipment and do them on the road, and we still there are situations where we do, or we do a film review, but by and large we try to keep everything as – as identical to how a home game is um, in terms of your preparation. And I don't talk about a road game any differently than I do a home game. Uh, the keys and the formula to success is very similar. And uh, you block out the distractions and crowd, and, and you have to do that at home too. I mean, I don't think, um, so I think the key is you know, stay very much consistent, stay as consistent as possible in your routine and in what you're doing. And, and, um, I think players appreciate that. I think they they don't like. I never try to throw them surprises. Um, if I don't have to, if I don't have to shake them up. I try to keep them. You know, they know what's coming, what to expect. Uh, yeah. Greg, Greg, you said after the win, Stevens' confidence is just growing. You're seeing a lot of growth in him, um, especially a performance like that. Starting out Big Ten player, getting into the bulk of conference play. How does a performance like that help him uh, start up, get off on the right foot for conference? Well, I think it's um, you know it's another validation that he you know as much as I talk to it about uh, talk to him about that and playing with confidence and what I feel about him and my thoughts of, about him as a player when he can go do it and validate it himself on the court that's even more impactful than what I can say so I think that's the thing is he's been able to have production that back, backs up what I've you know I've seen in him and and uh, we know he's a talented player and. Um, you know, I think it's just another step, you know, in his development, and hopefully he keeps going. Greg, um, Jordan Davis talked about this before the season, about being who he is and not who his brother was. Do you think for the most part he has played his strengths and, for use of a cliche, stayed in his lane, who he is as a player to help you guys win games? Yeah, I think he's gotten better at it. I think he's still um, learning that. and But I think there's definitely been – a marked improvement of staying consistent. And I think that's why he's been consistent because he understands who he is and who he needs to be to help us have success. Yep. With uh, Carter Gilmore, um, given his dad's background, uh, it seems like he's probably heard a lot of the same teachings for his entire basketball career. Do you see that and the, has that helped him in terms of what, how he's developed in, in what you guys want him to do and just the, the language maybe or or how how little fundamentals work. Yeah, and it's not only Brian. Actually, Stephanie's the best player in the household. So his mom is still, I think, holds the all-time scoring record at Platteville uh, on the women's side. So, yeah, I mean, I noticed that from day one. I mean, he, he understood hand targets. He understand understood footwork. Um, you know, the, the simple things that we are sometimes new to freshmen, he had obviously heard it, seen it, done it. Um, and then it's a matter of him, what he's, the jump he's taken is jump physically, which has helped him take the jump mentally. And I think that's been, he's always had the basketball IQ and the understanding physically he needed to, you know, take a jump forward and, and commit to it completely, um, which he's done. But yeah, you can definitely tell, I mean, he understands um, everything you know, that, w that we do and picks up on it really quick. His IQ is pretty high in that regard. But um, to your point, Todd, yeah, I, I saw that in the first few days he was here as a freshman that you could just, you could tell he was kind of a mini version of his dad or a younger version of his dad. 
Coach, I know you're focused on this year's guys, but you signed a, a big guy that might be able to help you next year, and, and Gus Yaldon. I know he's been around this program, you know, pretty much his whole life, and coming to your right. camp since he was little. I'm curious, you know, what were your first impressions of him? Um, do, you, do you kind of remember him before high school um, in, in some of your youth camps? And when did you kind of have a idea that you know this guy might be a recruit for us someday? Yeah, I think you know you you remember bits and pieces of him coming coming here for camps. I think Gus is a he's one of those guys that has a personality you don't forget. So, um, which I think everybody here is going to really love. Um, you know him being here, but uh, you know he's even though he went through all the other recruiting process, I think at the heart of hearts he always wanted to be here. And and for us, there were things he had to show, and, and still things. I think he's improved and talking to him with what he's done physically to improve himself. Um, you know, obviously he's playing at a very good place at Lalamere and, and against great competition. So um, the the key with Gus, as with pretty really everybody, is the desire to want to be here will help you through the rough days because there will be rough days for every single freshman that asked Connor Asijan about rough days. Uh, and, you know, everybody goes through them. Um so the desire to really want to be here and, and have that at the heart of it, um, I think for all those guys, you know, you look at Jack or uh, Nolan, Jonathan was just in um, for the last game before he goes back at it over in Detroit. So uh, all those guys have a burning desire. They really want to be at Wisconsin. And that, that amongst uh, probably above anything else, because again, they don't, they get told so many good things of how college is going to be this and that, and it's all good. And, and I have gotten more and more brutally honest with guys as they sit in my on office, like, this is going to be hard. Don't let anybody tell you it's not going to be hard. There's going to be rough days. But we have people here and resources that can help you through that, teammates, et cetera. Um, but at the end of the day, the desire to be here will trump all those those rough days. It'll help pull you through and, and – um, you know, Gus is another example of it. That, you know, the time comes down the road when he gets here, along with those other guys. That'll be a, you know, a good group. Greg, in recruiting, how tough is it to project leadership qualities and locker room fit when you're looking at a guy? I mean, you can tell if he has the raw skills, but in terms of that mental aspect, how challenging is that? Yeah, I think the, you know, I think the fit probably goes hand in hand with the leadership and you never know how you know the the Brad Davisons of the world are unicorns that you could tell from a mile away a long time ago that he was going to be a really good leader because everybody leads in different ways and that's great there needs to be different styles of leadership but I think until they I, I've always felt leadership is organic I can't anoint somebody a leader I see qualities you know, communication ability, work ethic. You have to be able to do the job yourself first before you can tell other people how to do it. So it's usually very successful players that that do a good job of taking that leadership role. Um, and some are more comfortable in their voice than others. And some of them, like Tyler Wall, has gotten more comfortable where 18 months ago, you know, he wouldn't take that, that onus upon him. So um, you look for it. You know, I think there's... You know, everybody has some sort of leadership capability. Um, you know, it's not always guards or backcourt players, but a lot of times it is just because of they have in a quarterbacking um, position, so to speak, with the ball in their hands a lot. And, and you know, my affinity for guys that have played football, and we've had a lot of guys that are quarterbacks that – or have been quarterbacks that understand the command of a huddle and those things and playing uh, a real – you know, a bigger team sport, so to speak, with that many bodies on the field. Um, so I, I think there's a lot of things. I don't think there's one specific thing that you see. And, and leadership can be developed, too. You know, we do things with a variety of things that we try to help our potential leaders become more comfortable in that role. Whoops. Greg, it seems like Garcia's kind of been doing a little bit of everything for Minnesota so far this season. Just curious, what have you seen on tape from him? Yeah, I mean, it's it's good to see from from a personal standpoint because obviously I've known Dawson for a long time and and we recruited him, but to that he's in a place where he's happy. You know, I know 
bouncing around a little bit. He was trying to find what was right for him. So I think um, that that's important individually for him as a person. But it's the you know six ten, six eleven, really skilled. Um, you know, really shoots it. The ball comes off his hand really well, much like it did. You know, when he was in high school and and the previous stops. So I think he's in a position where he's mature now. He's got. You know, some years of experience under his belt, um, and he's a play, and he's found happiness, so to speak. And I don't know if the place is that, or just sometimes it just takes people a while to to work your way through those things. But with whether it's him or Jamison Battle, um, I would say Talon Cooper that's come in as a transfer. Uh, numbers of assists to turnover ratio is really good, shooting the three really well. Um, and then they're you know kind of incorporating four freshmen. That are that are learning on the fly, so you can see, you can see the splashes of what they can be, um, and obviously Garcia and and um, Battle, and now that he's back from an injury, um, you know they're they're the experienced vets along with with uh, Cooper, but um, you know it's a group much like what I thought of Western Michigan that they're better than what their record says on paper, um, because you see instances of it clicking, and I think just have so many new parts and pieces that they're trying to find, you know, that common ground where they're all on the same page.